Am I being too loud? <laughs> What does pasta do to your body and what effect does pasta have on your blood sugar? If you are insulin resistant like me or you have some type of diabetes, you may be wondering about the relationship between pasta and blood sugar. Well, I'll be testing it out in another blood sugar test experiment where I will be comparing the effects of traditional semolina flour pasta to the supposedly better for you chickpea pasta to see if there is a difference in my blood sugar. And in my household, I only feed my kids chickpea pasta, so let's really put it to the test. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we go. I have my pasta all ready to eat and I'm gonna check with you guys in one and two hours to see what happens to my blood sugar. I'll be back. The portion sizes on the back of food labels um, are really, really small, or I have been overeating like crazy all of my life because that pasta serving was seriously so tiny. I can't believe that that is considered one serving. I feel like on any given day, if I were to eat pasta, let's say at a restaurant or something, I would probably eat like three times that amount. I mean, I think it would be different, obviously, if there was like protein, like chicken or ground beef and vegetables and stuff, um, it would be more filling, but... Oh, that was a really, really, really small serving of pasta. And this blood sugar reading will not really be indicative of how much I usually would eat. So let's see what my reading is at one hour. I'm so hungry. 1.30. That's pretty high. I started off at 98, so it's gone up 32 points in one hour. Um, let's hope that it's on the way back down at the two hour mark. If you've seen my other videos, you know that that's not always the case. Sometimes I keep going up even at the two hour mark. I will check back in with you guys then and I will be starving and my stomach will be grumbling the entire time until then. All right, we are at the two hour checkpoint now. I was at 1.30 at the one hour mark. I feel fairly certain that it's gonna be on the way back down. And I feel a little bit bummed because I wasted um, an opportunity to really enjoy regular pasta. I undercooked it, so it was a little bit hard and some parts were crunchy. So I'm feeling a little bit regretful that I didn't take full advantage of the opportunity to enjoy regular pasta. But 1.13 is my final reading for the two hour mark. So spiked up to 1.30, which was a 32 point spike. And now it is on the way back down. Again, I wanna point out that the serving for the pasta that I ate was really, really small. There is no way that that is how much pasta I would regularly eat like that's not a meal so I'm keeping that in mind but tomorrow with the chickpea pasta we're gonna do the same 56 gram serving and see if my blood sugar is lower if it's the same if it's worse let's see how it goes I will see you guys tomorrow I'm back today with the chickpea pasta, which I have here. I measured out the 56 grams and I'm gonna go ahead and eat this. You guys also saw my pre-meal number, which was 78. Now, as I'm doing these experiments, it's so frustrating to me that my fasting numbers and my pre-meal numbers vary so much from food item to food item because it makes it harder to compare the numbers. But regardless, yesterday my fasting with the semolina flour pasta was 98. Today it's 78 before I eat this. It's a 20 point difference, but I guess we will work with it. All right, so I'm gonna eat this and then I'll check back in with you guys at one and two hours. All right, so I am back for my one hour test and I wanna share just a couple insights with you as I'm doing this. First of all, 
Bonza chickpea pasta is so good. Honestly, I really like it. I've tried uh, lentil pasta, I've tried black bean pasta, and both of those things were like, ugh, absolute no's for me. But the Bonza chickpea pasta to me, it's, I, I really like it. I like the texture. I like that it's a mild taste. It's the most like regular flour pasta that I've tried. And also yesterday at the one hour mark, um, I was starving, but Right now, I'm actually quite full and I'm not gonna need to really eat anything after I finish up with this experiment. So that's good. All right, one hour mark. I am at... Ooh! Oh, 164. I'm not kidding you guys. I'm at 164. So one factor to take into consideration, stress levels make your blood sugar rise. And I just finished up an interview, which is a stressor, but could that be what made my blood sugar spike? Oh Lord. Let me check back in at the two hour mark to see where we're at. But oh my God, I'm shocked right now. We are back for our two hour check. And I'm anticipating what this number is going to be because I was at 164. That's crazy to me. I think it has to be the stress. Let's see where we are at the two hour mark though. 114. Oh my God. My head is hurting like crazy. Um, probably one due to the stress, but two because my blood sugar is dropping rapidly so my insulin response was probably very strong which i think really is what causes my headaches when i eat too many carbs um but my insulin shot up and now my blood sugar is crashing it dropped oh 50 is that right 50 points from 164 to 114 so 50 points in an hour and i'm feeling it in my body <sighs> I don't know what to make of this. I think I might have to do this experiment again without having a stressful interview in the middle of the experiment. But I'm still full, so that's a good sign. Like the chickpea pasta really does fill me up way more than the flour pasta. But my blood sugar is still elevated more than 30 points from where I started um, pre-meal. So not good and shockingly worse right now with the chickpea pasta than the flour pasta. Let me figure out what I wanna do with these numbers and I'll get back to you. So today I had to do a do-over with the chickpea pasta. Yesterday's results completely shocked me. With the regular flour pasta, my blood sugar only spiked 32 points at that one hour mark, but with the chickpea pasta yesterday, my blood sugar spiked 86 points. I seriously could not believe it. So I had to do a do over today. Now yesterday, like I mentioned, I did test right after coming off of an interview and interview situations are always stressful. So I'm thinking that maybe the stress was enough to shoot up my blood sugar because that does happen. So let me check again today, no interview, easy peasy, calm kind of day and see if there's a difference in my blood sugar with the chickpea pasta. All right, so I'm back to check at the one hour mark and already I'm noticing differences in how my body is feeling um, compared to yesterday and today. So yesterday I was pretty full at the one hour mark. I wasn't hungry. I felt pretty satisfied. Uh, didn't feel like eating more. Today is different. I'm starving. And again, I'm wondering if it was just the stress of that interview that suppressed my appetite and made me feel full. Because again, today I'm starving after an hour. Similarly to how I felt with the semolina pasta, um, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen here. Again, yesterday my blood sugar spiked 86 points, which was crazy, crazy, crazy to me. Today, 104. So it spiked 27 points. Am I doing my math right? Okay, 27 points versus the 86 yesterday. Stress plays such a huge role. I really think it was the stress. That's insane. Two hour check mark. My dog is here and wants to know what my blood sugar level is at as well. I was at 104. 
Am I being too loud? <laughs> okay. I was at 104, now I'm at 93. Yay, 93, that's good news. So I'm going to, as usual, look at my numbers side by side, do some comparisons, um, uh, create some takeaways, conclusions, things that I've learned from this experiment, and then I'll share that with you guys in a little bit. All right, so let's go to comparing all the numbers, takeaways, and lessons. So the biggest lesson definitely is that stress impacts my blood sugar significantly. It's crazy that I ate the same thing two days, but on the first day, my blood sugar spiked a whopping 86 points and the next day it only spiked 27 points. I mean that is a huge huge difference Definitely noteworthy. So when it comes to stress my body kind of freaks out We tend to put a lot of emphasis on food and what we're putting into our bodies, which of course is important But it's not the end-all be-all clearly as this experiment has shown Managing stress levels is so important. I saw this a lot when I had gestational diabetes where I would eat the same thing just like in this experiment and one day my blood sugar would be fine and the next day it would spike. So I'm assuming that other factors like stress and of course like how much sleep I got that night, all of those things do play a part and needs to be addressed when you're thinking overall about how to manage your blood sugar in a healthy way. So why does stress impact our blood sugar levels so much? Well, when facing a stressful situation, like let's say encountering a tiger in the middle of the road, um, our bodies in preparation to either fight the tiger or run away from the tiger, floods our bloodstream with glucose to give us the energy that we need to survive. Makes sense. So I'm gonna assume that my blood sugar response to the chickpea pasta on the very stressful day was a one-off. And I'm gonna take today's blood sugar readings as how my body would probably normally respond to that chickpea pasta. So comparing the flour pasta to the chickpea pasta, I really didn't see much of a difference. With the regular pasta, my blood sugar spiked 32 points, and then with the chickpea pasta, my blood sugar spiked 27 points. Those numbers are way too similar that to me they're negligible, especially when we take into account that these meters do have a 20% margin of error. So really, I didn't see a big difference. Now, does this mean that I'm gonna throw out all of my chickpea pasta and just have a free-for-all with the white pasta? No, of course not, because again, we have to keep in mind that the serving sizes on the back of those boxes were teeny tiny and we're not failing at all. Also, I like the extra protein that comes with the chickpea pasta. And again, to me, flavor-wise, I, I don't mind the chickpea pasta whatsoever. So I'm gonna continue feeding my kids the higher protein pasta. But if we're out to a restaurant and I wanna take a few forkfuls of pasta from my husband's plate, now I don't have to feel badly about doing that. I'm comforted in knowing that a couple bites is totally okay for my blood sugar and that I'm not doing some crazy damage to my body. All right, so another experiment in the books. Comment down below if there are blood sugar experiments that you would like to see. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.